Mr. Michael Crawford showed why God does not exist and failed to logically prove God because he did not give an account of how denial of God leads to immediate self-contradiction. Instead, he decided to try to show various fallacies in my challenge, and I will now debunk all the supposed fallacies he articulated. The first fallacy Mr. Crawford claims my challenge commits is an argument from ignorance. Mr. Crawford is wrong in that claim because I am not saying God is false because he hasn't been proven true which would be an argument from ignorance. What my challenge entails is that if God is real and exists, then since he is supposed to be a necessary being, then denial of God would and should lead to immediate self-contradiction. Then from there, I'm asking theists to show that. If they don't, God clearly is not a necessary being, and if God is not a necessary being, God does not exist. That is not simply saying something is false because it hasn't been proven true. There is an argument that is being made for me that shows the reason why God doesn't exist, unless someone gives an account of how God is a necessary being. Arguments from ignorance entail assumptions. Assumptions do not have validation. To assume is to take for granted. I am not taking for granted that God does not exist because you didn't prove God exists. I am telling you God is not a necessary being. So God does not exist because of that. The way to show God is a necessary being is to show that denial of God leads to immediate self-contradiction. That, therefore, entails an argument on my behalf, not an unargued assumption. So Mr. Crawford was wrong in his charge that I committed an argument from ignorance. Next, Mr. Crawford claims that I commit a fallacy of false definition. Based on my knowledge and philosophy, there is no such thing as the fallacy of false definition. So until Mr. Crawford shows otherwise, I will conclude he made that up. Then Mr. Crawford blunders into claiming existence is not a being, but a state of being, which is of course false. Existence is a being in that it is a fact that existence exists. In other words, that it has being. Mr. Crawford also fails to understand that when I reference existence, I am, as an objectivist, referring to it as a collective noun, conceptually denoting the fact of existence and all things that exist, has existed, or will ever exist in the future, taken as a concrete whole and conceptualized. Next, Mr. Crawford claims I commit the fallacy of the straw man argument by asserting that he attempts to prove the existence of God. This is a gross misunderstanding on Mr. Crawford's part that I was rather amazed and annoyed that he committed. Simply put, after I said visual publishing medium, you should imagine grammatically that there is a comma there, as the next thing I said was a set off of parenthetical elements. So written down, what I said would look like this. I'll be challenging various prominent theists online, mainly if not exclusively those that utilize YouTube as their visual publishing medium comma to logically prove the existence of God. That's why there was a slight pause there because grammatically that's where a comma would go to separate parenthetical elements otherwise known as added information. The part where I said mainly if not exclusively those that utilize YouTube as their visual publishing medium was the parenthetical element or added information. Taken out it would have been, I'll be challenging various prominent theists online to logically prove the existence of God. Seen in this manner, as I think most people would already have figured out, I was not claiming you attempt to prove the existence of God, but instead that I'm challenging you to do so in the manner I have innovated. So once again, Mr. Crawford's claim that I committed said fallacy is an error. Next, Mr. Crawford claimed I committed the fallacy of a false dichotomy. This fallacy charge was nonsense, as Mr. Crawford did not identify what the dichotomy was, as he failed to articulate how I gave two alternatives for him to pick from or else, or what those two alternatives are. What he did articulate was a straw man fallacy on his part. I didn't say you can't prove the existence of things without them being necessary. And we're not talking about other things, we're talking about God, who is supposed to be a necessary being, not contingent, like other things. Then Mr. Crawford spouts off the fallacy of special pleading, which he also did not properly articulate consistent with what special pleading is, and failed since it's based on a misrepresentation of my position as well, since I never said anything about directly observable. Then Mr. Crawford spouts off another fallacy, this time the fallacy of circular reasoning. 
This fallacy charge was nonsense because it was predicated on a misunderstanding or dishonest omission on Mr. Crawford's part that when I said existence, I meant it as the primacy of existence represented by existence as a conceptual whole, which is directly articulated in my video. Existence as a conceptual whole is an ontological sum, conceptualized, not the quality of existing. This is a basic and elementary misunderstanding on Mr. Crawford's part. Then Mr. Crawford claims I committed the fallacy of the double standard, which was again nonsense and based on another baffling comprehension error on Mr. Crawford's part, as my Proving God Exists Challenge Month video was not a response to UK Christians' Dorpatan Refutation Month, which should be obvious because they have nothing to do with each other. I simply sent it as a video response so UK Christian would be more aware of it. Further, Mr. Crawford's challenge, like all the rest, is completely unfounded. As he complains, I took almost a month to respond to UK Christian, bizarrely or dishonestly forgetting that UK Christian was not expecting a response from me, nor did he ask for a response from me within a given period of time in his video. All in all, Mr. Carver's video struck me as a pathetic attempt to evade my challenge and instead throw a bunch of fallacies at me in an attempt to try and invalidate my challenge rather than simply proving that God is a necessary being through his claim and that God must be in order to be an irreducible primary and logical absolute that escapes regress and contingency. Now, Mr. Crawford, instead of showing us how the denial of God leads to immediate self-contradiction, regales us in a syllogistic argument that goes as follows. Premise 1, the universe requires a prime mover. Premise 2, God can be, in a general sense, defined as the prime mover of the universe. And in conclusion, God in some form exists. Mr. Crawford's argument fails badly and is extremely poor, not only because it does not adhere to any obvious rules of logical inference, but because Mr. Crawford gives no substantiation for the first or second premises, making both illegitimate as they are bare assertion fallacies. Mr. Crawford needs to start by explicating why the universe requires a prime mover, which entails him showing that the universe cannot be eternal. Then in the second premise, Mr. Crawford needs to start by giving an argument for why God being defined as the prime mover of the universe translates into God existing, as otherwise he commits a non-sequitur fallacy there, since God being defined as the prime mover of the universe does not logically follow that God exists. You would need to connect the two clauses and argue for why only God qualifies as the prime mover of the universe, and you need to explicate what you mean by universe and substantiate why your definition is necessarily true rather than one defining the universe as everything that exists. So in summation, of the two people I challenged, UK Christian has thus far failed to respond, and Mr. Crawford responded but refused to answer my challenge and instead decided to evade it by concocting a bunch of fallacies to throw out the challenge instead of meeting it head on. There is a paucity of intellectual and philosophically trained or talented Christians on YouTube, especially with the demise of Veritas 48, so I might not have too many more people to challenge after these two. I challenge next Keith Truth and Lane C.H. to show that God is a necessary being such that denial of God leads to immediate self-contradiction. In other words, give us an argument showing how denying or rejecting God is self-contradictory.